In this video, I want to talk to you about ways to get better at Clothes 3D. Hello! In this video, I want to talk to you about getting better at Clothes 3D, understanding the program, and building a step-by-step -step way of just getting better and better. Clothes 3D is a huge program with so many functions and so many different tools and so many different things you can do. You can easily get lost in, oh my God, what do I do? So in this video, let's take a look of how I can make your life easier to understand what you can do with Clothes 3D and how to approach it. Here are seven ways to get better at Clothes 3D. One of the main things that really stumps people in the very beginning when they first encounter Clothes 3D is that it's very different than any other program. It's especially by the Adobe Suite, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, you name it. A lot of people are very familiar with that particular software and they kind of expect Close 3D to be very similar. And in a way it is. It still has a bar with various tools and you select the tools and you work in a 2D window, but you have 2D and a 3D window and the tools are very different and they do very different things. So first, I would say don't have expectations that, oh, I'm just going to get this. I have knowledge in similar software, so this is going to be a breeze. Expect that this is a program that really relates to fashion design, pattern making, making clothes. The tools that you have will make a lot more sense because they do make sense and they're really made for people who work with design, people who work in fashion in terms of fashion design and 3D making and 2D flat pattern making. Next, understand what it is that you want to do with Close 3D. Close 3D is such a vast, huge program that can do so many different things. It has so much depth. You could design in 3D. You can design in the 2D window. You can design in the 3D window. You can make a garment. You can just have a fun simulation of a design just to see and test what it looks like. You can be a very serious pattern maker and work only in the 2D window and work on real patterns that done correctly, you can print out and have them go directly to a sample maker seamstress and they will be in the right scale with the right annotation, with the the right shapes, with the right specs, with the right measurements, the right proportions, and they will work perfectly for making a garment and for cutting the fabric with these particular patterns. You could use Close 3D to just work in the 3D window and work with the 3D pen and have fun designing a garment on a 3D avatar and just having fun with the shapes. So that would be great for a fashion designer who just wants to try out design ideas and just to see how it looks. And and they're not necessarily concerned with the patterns or how exactly these garments would be made. So that could be just for proportion, just for shape, just for overall volume. Next, you could have more of a technical designer who is more interested in getting the right patterns, but then grading them and making sure that all of the sizing works throughout the different types of garments. So that's a very technical way to approach Close 3D and to work maybe just in the 2D window. Yes, you could do a quick simulation and see what it looks like in the 3D window, but your primary purpose would be to work in the 2D window. You could work primarily in the 3D window, more as a creator, as a fashion designer, as a visionary to see what your idea looks like. You could be more of a technical designer and work more in the 2D window and be a lot more concerned with the technical aspects of fashion. That would be the patterns, the specking, and anything else that has to do with that. You could also be a more rounded designer who works both in the 2D window and the 3D window and goes back and forth and compares the results and just flows through the process and understands design. You could use Clo 3D more as like an illustration tool and just create these quick sketches or simulations that help you visualize an idea, maybe create an Instagram story or any kind of a social media representation of your designs and you use this more for advertising. Then you would not be concerned with the technical aspects and having correct patterns. So make sure you understand how do you want to use Close 3? What is the purpose of Close 3D for you? What is it that you want to get out of Close 3D? Are you going to be a fashion designer, visionary that is using more the Close 3D window? 
Are you more of a technical designer that will work more in the 2D window? Or are you gonna combine both and pay attention to both technical aspects and the design illustration? And of course, you can do beautiful simulations with an avatar that's walking, moving. It could be more of the brand vision at the end where you have the final execution and you have a beautiful video of a walking avatar, a moving avatar, something that is much more in motion. So make sure that you're clear on what it is that you want to do and really focus on the tools that will help you achieve that. Next, you really need to understand pattern making in order to create a great garment in close 3D. This is the real deal. If you understand pattern making and know how to make the right shapes, the right pattern shapes, then your simulations will look amazing. They will be right. Yes, in close 3D, you can pull a little bit here, you can pull a little bit there. The software will make it look like everything fits perfectly together. But in reality, your patterns might be really awkwardly shaped. And yes, it looks okay in the simulations, but they're not real patterns. And Close 3D is meant to be the real tool where you're creating patterns and you have a simulation based on those patterns. So just because your simulation looks really good, doesn't mean that your patterns are right. Always check and make sure that you have correct patterns so that you have a great garment and you can actually use the patterns from your 2D window. Next, recognize the fabrics that you're working with. Understand that in Cloth 3D, it is not just about the color and the texture of the fabric, but it's also about what kind of a textile are you actually applying to this garment. Different fabrics, drape different. Something light and airy could drape very softly and very drapey or something that's a little stiffer and crispier like organza for example will hold the shape. So something like velvet will drape heavy and create soft big drapes and something like linen would look very different. So make sure that you're selecting the right textile, the right fabric for the shape that you want. Think about the 3D shapes. If you're using Cloth 3D much more for fun, for simulations, for things that just look beautiful, recognize what looks good in Cloth 3D. What looks really great in Cloth 3D is big shapes, voluminous shapes, bright colors, shiny colors. These are things that the software simulates really well. Applying prints, making patches, adding elements, trims that look really contrasty, shiny, textural. Those are things that look amazing in Cloth 3D. So utilize those tools, utilize those shapes and colors and shine and surface treatments for things that you just want to look incredible. Make your talent shine through carefully selected design detail. And last but not least, Recognize what you want to do with Cloth 3D. Do you want to be that technical designer? Do you want your imagination to run free? Do you want simulations that look incredible? Do you want motion? Do you want movement? Whatever it is, focus on learning that and making yourself the best that you can be in that particular area. You don't need to learn everything in Cloth 3D. You don't need to know every single tool in Cloth 3D. Just like Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign or any other program, you really should focus and specialize on the things that you're best at and also the things that you really need to do. What are you best at? Work on that and make sure that you shine in that area. Hit the subscribe button, give a like to this video, and I'll see you next time with more tutorials.